Good morning and good afternoon, folks, depending on what time zone you're in. Um, my name is Mike Clark. I would like to welcome you to today's DBA virtual chapter. Um, today's topic is going to be how to migrate a SQL Server database <clears throat> to Microsoft Azure SQL uh, version 12. Today, we have the pleasure of having our speaker be Toya Bali. Um, again, my name is Mike Clark. I will be your moderator. And our sponsor for today's session is uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Um, we appreciate uh, um, uh, their support and help supporting uh, the SQL Server virtual chapter. Um, technology helps us be able to communicate uh, to a broader audience at a more economical cost, but they do help share the, the, the cost burden as well as come along and help provide some additional support uh, in, in, in many ways that are needed. So we do want to give a shout out to Hewlett Packard for uh, being a partner for uh, this virtual chapter. Um, some things about um, the, the DBA virtual chapter is part of a larger organization um, called uh, PASS, Professional Association of SQL Server. And there are many um, different things that PASS does. They provide a lot of different training, online community um, events, and so forth. Um, one of the things that they do several times a year, two or three times a year, is they do a 24 hours of PASS. And so basically what that, what that is, it's 24 one-hour sessions um, of DB of, of SQL Server technical content. And these are local, these are in local languages at times, or Spanish and Russian and German, basically. Um, and, um, and so they go around the world 24, 24 consecutive one hour sessions. Um, if you go to um, sqlpass.org, um, you can click on the 24 hours of pass button and, and get more di uh, information and register for sessions that might, that might interest you. Um, another thing that they do is they actually have a business analytics uh, track within the PASS organization, and they've now have their own um, um, event, online, uh, a physical event. And so that this year it's in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, in the, June 21st. So if you're in, interested in that, you can go to passbaday.com, or additionally, you can go to sqlpass.org uh, and click on Business Analytics Day. Um, there's also a Microsoft event. Um, I just realized I'm not sharing, so let me uh, let me take care of that. So uh, back up a little bit here. So we're on the Business Analytics Day here. So yeah, if you go to uh, SQLPass.org and click on Business Analytics, you can actually get to the website and register, get information, and register for that event if that's what you want to do. Um, additionally. Um, Microsoft itself is putting on a, uh, an online event called Data Amp, and um, you can go to Microsoft.com at Data Amp and actually register for that class. I've done that. Um, I'm looking forward to that event. It's coming up uh, next week. Um, so it was, it's a lot of stuff to do about uh, um, Microsoft and how they want to uh, manage your data, help manage your data. There's also other virtual chapter groups. This is the best, of course, and that's why you are all here. But there are other ones out there that also you know, can cross-section some of your interests. Um, there's language-specific ones. There's technology, um, data science, big data, cloud, a whole bunch of different uh, tracks to, 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 to consider. Um, we, are, we are the best and, and the nicest of all of them, I can assure you. But uh, there's other ones that also provide very good content. Um, there's also SQL Saturdays. Um, so basically, these are a Saturday event that has SQL related topics all day long in them. And they're around the world. Um, so if you look at one that's close to your area, um, there's one in Redmond, the, the mothership area. There's one in Silicon Valley. I happen to be in Silicon Valley. Uh, the Microsoft office is two miles away. Um, that's April 22nd. And then at the end of the month in Rochester, New York, which is my hometown physically, um, there's one there. Um, I might be popping up for that one as well. Um, but there's other ones around the world. If you're in the EMEA, there's one in Israel coming up at the end of this month. If you go to SQLSaturday.com, you can get uh, see all the upcoming events and look at the actual agendas and the speakers and so forth. Um, so that's a great it's a great way to do a local event and get uh, get your fill of SQL related information. Um, and then there's also a local physical chapters um, that uh, I have one here in Silicon Valley that I attend uh, monthly, but they're around the world. If you wanted to um, find one local to you. Go to sqlpass.org and, and, and click through to find a, a local chapter near you. Um, you can meet folks. You can do present. You can present yourself. 
Um, if there is not one near you and you think you wanted to start one, there's also a way to do that. So if you go to the sequelpass.org site and click on uh, local chapters, you can get more information on how to uh, be involved with one or actually start one. Um, and PASS is a volunteer-run organization, so if you have a passion for things SQL Server and, and wanting to help share and build that environment up, if you, again, if you go to sqlpass.org and click on uh, volunteering, um, we can get you connected to, to folks there. There's a big, long email address here, but if you go to sqlpass.org, it's a much easier way to get there. Um, and then a lot of folks um, find this content by our U YouTube channel itself, and we would like to encourage them to actually register with sqlpass.org. It is free, and you get a, a bunch more benefits because uh, you can be on a, um, a distribution list and be informed of things that are, that are coming versus just uh, um, finding them as they're spread around the web. Um, and then there's other ways to connect as well. If you go to pass.org, which is a parent group for um, SQL Pass, um, you can, we're on Facebook, LinkedIn, as well as Twitter. Um, and, but to come back to today's, today's meeting, we want to bring it closer to home. Thank you all again for attending. Um, but today, um, our per presenter is Toyob, and he's going to, again, go over how to migrate our databases to uh, Microsoft Azure. Um, and he's, he's quite an accomplished technical leader. He's, he's been doing this for a while, 11 years or so. Uh, he's got three large uh, business sectors he's, he's dealt with, finance, e-commerce, and healthcare. Those are some pretty big hitters. He's a Microsoft and Mongo um, certified database professional. Um, he's worked both on-prem and the cloud. He's got a, a ton of hands-on experience with things that are really relevant to the modern DBA. He's currently working for a GMO out of the Boston office. Um, he's focusing on automation, improving and streamlining their, their workflows, and planning and preparing um, them for the cloud migration, which I think that's why we're all here. I'm in the middle of the same progress uh, process right now. Um, he's a regular speaker at user groups and, and other SQL Saturday events. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass the presenter over to uh, Toyab, and, and he can take it from here. Thank you, Mike. Uh, can you hear me good? I can hear you well, sir. Okay. And I'm trying to make you presenter. Can you see my screen now? Yes, yeah, right. I can okay, see it well. Mm -hmm. You're all set. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And thanks, Mike, for the introduction. Actually, I'll be in Rochester giving two sessions. If you're there, we'll probably see in person. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. I know it's not easy during in the, in the middle of the day from, from your work to take out one hour, uh, but it's great that if you can do it. So welcome. And. My name is Toyob. I'm actually located in Boston in East Coast. So it's 2 p.m. here. And good morning, good afternoon to wherever you are. And so this is a little bit about myself. As Mike mentioned, I'm working as a DBA for about 11 years, certified in SQL Server and MongoDB. I actually worked in Merchant Marine before moving to this trade for 10 years. And outside work, I'm a runner. I did uh, one full marathon two years ago and uh, did a bunch of half marathons. I'm doing another half this year in October. I have three kids, so that's where most of my time goes other than working with database. I speak in local user groups in SQL Saturdays. And I also answer questions in uh, SQL Help. If you don't know what is SQL Help, I strongly request you or I strongly suggest uh, you open a Twitter account and follow this hashtag. There are a bunch of smart folks that are smarter than me. MVP is the question answers for you for free. Also, I answer questions in dba.stackexchange. I have a website uh, at sqlworldwide.com. Uh, you can check it later on if you're interested. So let's set the stage correct, see what we're going to talk about. So I, I'll give a brief overview about Azure uh, for the folks, you know, who really didn't use it or 
just looking at it may be hard from other people. And then if you want to test or if you want to try out what I'm going to talk about today, you definitely need an account in Azure. And that holds many people off. They're like, you know, how I'm going to open an account? Why should I give my credit card? How they're going to charge it? So I see that's a barrier for many people to opening an account and just start playing with it. So I'll show you some different ways that you can get free credit. And it's actually a pretty good amount, up to $500 for one year. And trust me, if you are disciplined a little bit, like if you shut down your resources, delete the unnecessary resources after you do some testing, uh, that money can go a long way. Just to give you an example of everything that I'm going to show you today is going to cost less than $2 from my account. And of course, I have a corporate account that I can use, but for this demo, I'm using my personal account and it will be less than $2. We'll also talk about a little bit SQL database as a logical server in Azure because that's a mind shift from on-prem to Azure. What we are used to as a SQL Server instance and what are the things reside in SQL Server instance, some of those will not be in Azure and there will be more stuff that doesn't belong today in a SQL Server instance will be there in Azure or possible if you want to add those things. We'll talk about a storage account briefly, and we'll probably spend most of the time uh, ways to migrate. And what my goal is to just create a small database on-prem in my laptop that I'm using right now for this presentation and show you four different tools where you can download those, how you can install those, and using those four tools, you migrate the same database to Azure. And at the end, I'll have a slide that will give us some pros and cons of using different tools. So at least at the end of this presentation, you are exposed to all the tools, then you can decide for yourself, uh, you know, which one is probably applicable for you or for your company, whatever you are doing, or you can just play with all four and, you know, get a little bit of practical experience. And this is a definition I put in here just for you, you know, just for the sake of, because explaining Azure is pretty difficult and you know, it's, it's a huge, it's increasing, it's functionality is increasing, it's getting bigger day by day, there's new data center, new regions, new feature. And how do you tell somebody what is Azure? So, you know, when I was doing a course in Microsoft Virtual Academy, Bob Tabor, he's a Azure MVP, you know, I saw this definition and I really liked it and it kind of summarized in one sentence, uh, you know, what is Azure? I and mean, I couldn't summarize any better, or I didn't see anybody summarizing any better. So I just put it there if anybody is interested later on, uh, you know, when you get the slide decks. So we'll talk briefly about Azure. So this is probably most of us are today uh, that we are in our data center. So we are managing everything from hardware software, application, database, storage, OS, patching, and everything. And then if we want to move to cloud, we have different choices. And the choices will vary based on your company, based on uh, the company's business model and what they need and what they want to do or how fast they want to go. So I just put this and you, know, you might know or you might not know about this. So a lot of companies, are saying, so like, just to take an example of, we, if we are a SQL Server DBA, we are used to service packs or CUs that we get. And we have the full control of when do we apply a CU or a SP. A uh, lot of shops I saw, like they don't want to take a cumulative update, uh, even though Microsoft do same kind of regression as, an SP, uh, as a service pack, uh, unless they have to, unless there's a bug that there's, uh, you know, they encounter and they want to fix. But when you move to Azure, you lose that control uh, because Microsoft is not gonna ask you whether you want this patch or not, you get it automatic. Of course, Microsoft do their due diligence, you know, they test it, they put it in a smaller subset of a, within a data center, then they move to data center region and, and, and all the regions. So if you still want that control or if you need that control, you can go 
to the first model that I have there uh, on the picture, infrastructure as a service. So you still control your servers, your storage. Uh, uh, sorry, you, you give those them, but you still control your, your uh, operating system, uh, your database, your applications, and you decide when you want to patch or you know uh, when you want to do your, your maintenance. The next model is a platform as a service. And if you think, no, I don't want to do those, you know, let somebody else handle this for us or for my company, uh, you can move to move to a pass uh, model. And in that case, you're just going to be controlling your application and your data. And the vendor, in this case, Microsoft, is going to take care of everything. So you really don't have a control. Um, so like in this case, they call Azure version 12. That's it. Um, we, you really don't know you know, if it's a SQL Server 2014, 2016, service back one, two, three, or what CU level, uh, or even with your Windows patch, you we get it every month on Tuesdays from Microsoft and different companies deploy this in different cycle. Some companies deploy in dev in one month, they let it bake for 30 days and then put that patch in production next month and then put the dev in the, you know, the, the latest one in dev. and it, you let Microsoft do all those, you control your applications and your data. And then software is a service, you know, like uh, if there are companies they are uh, hosting, you know, there, there are a lot of companies, they, uh, they host everything there and you just have account and you just use their service. You don't care about your the application code, you don't care where your data, uh, you care about your data, but you're really not managing your data actively. So that's another model. And it will all, again, you know, three things that you need to decide, uh, you know, how much control you want to have, how much customization you want, and, uh, you know, how much money you want to spend. So next I talked about getting some free credit. So I put this here and I also have a short link. And when you get the slides, uh, uh, you will get the full link also. But I created uh, those short links for folks to remember. Uh, if or if you want to take a quick note. So the first one is free for everybody. Anybody and everybody can go to Microsoft website. You need to have a Microsoft account. And when I say Microsoft account, you can use your existing email address. Like I use my Yahoo email for my Microsoft account. Uh, you can use your existing email address, open a Microsoft account, and then you can open a trial account. One thing you have to remember on this, once you activate, it's $200 for first 30 days, and you will need a credit card. But what I found out that Microsoft doesn't do the trick that uh, many services outside you know, our profession that people do. Once you give your credit card, you don't actively or proactively cancel it, they start billing you. In this case, they don't do it. After 30 days, you will go to your portal, you will just see that your account is deactivated and you do get notice uh, via your email address. And at that point, if you want to go, you know, pay as you go model, you can always uh, check in uh, and then they will bill you as you use. But what I would suggest to you is to hold on to this and use the next one, the $25 per month for 12 months. And this is also open for anybody. You can just become a member of uh, uh, the Dev Essentials, Microsoft Dev Essentials, and that gives you a $25 per month for one year. And you even don't need a credit card for this one. And the reason I like this one is you first play with the $25 for whatever time you need to get comfortable before you really want to do some heavyweight stuff, then you open the first one where you get the $200 and you can, you have to use it within 30 days. And the next option, I would definitely, if you don't have an account already and if you are not, you know, burning some, some money, you know, ask your company, uh, check in your company, whoever is managing the subscriptions or licensing. If you have a MSDN license, um, spare one that they can give you. If you open a Visual Studio account with your MSDN, license uh, you can get from you know from fifty dollar up to one hundred dollar per month as long as your msdn license is valid so i would definitely you know urge you to go and check out at your workplace a lot of companies have licenses that they are not being used and nowadays actually the msdn license beside what we're talking about you get a bunch of uh you know extra uh, you know goodies like uh, i know like plural side you get i think for 12 months and, and, and there are a bunch of other stuff that you can get with that. So definitely check that out. 
So as I said, we'll talk about logical server. So it's created in Azure subscription and, and we'll go and I'll create one just so you can see what I'm talking about. And a logical server, it's a parent resource for all these four items. So you can put a database, you can put elastic pool. So I'll just tell you briefly what is elastic pool. We're not going to spend much time on this. So in Azure, within a logical server, you can put thousands of database. But the way you pay for each database has a pricing model. Uh, there's a basic tier, a standard tier, and within that there are you know different subcategories. But for example, if you have business across the world, right now it's noon or 2 p.m. here, uh, folks in Asia is probably, you know, there's probably not much business going on. So if, if you have one of your database that you have a higher pricing model, you are just wasting your money. So what you can do, you can bun, bundle a bunch of databases and you can buy a, uh, a, a elastic pool kind, you can just you know, bundle a resource and you can buy that, put all your database, then all databases are going to share that resource. So if your business is, is, is active right now here, those databases can use the, the, the whole resource that you bought and the one in Asia right now is probably not going to use those. So you can just share it across the board. You can also put a data warehouse in logical server. And that's, that's why I was telling you at the beginning that, um, you know, we don't probably put a world be database and a data warehouse in the same database instance, uh, but you can do that in Azure, and they really uh, work, uh, you know, separately within their within their in, in in a contained database kind of concept that we are used to right now. You can compare to that. Also, in a logical server, will hold a namespace, so the namespace will give you kind of uh, your your uh, your signature to connect or uh, your URL if you are you know, say like if you have a stitch database from on-prem, you have a data file to your Azure, you can use that namespace to connect to. We are going to use a namespace to connect to our, uh, the one we're going to create to using the SQL Server Management Studio and Visual Studio and which we'll show in the demo. Next, I'm going to talk about a storage account. So in Azure, there is two types of storage account. One is a general purpose, one is a blob storage. So a general purpose, storage account is what you are seeing in the slide right now. You can put tables, uh, queues, files, blobs. Also, you can put Azure VM disks. Uh, if you open a new VM in Azure, your disks can go to a general account. But a general purpose account also have two performance tier. They have a standard. In a standard account, you can put all four that we are seeing right now here plus we can put our Azure VM disk. But most likely if you are, you know, putting stuff in production, you'll probably open a general purpose, you'll probably open a general purpose premium account and premium account can only hold uh, Azure VM disk. There is also blob storage account. If you are only dealing with blobs, you can just open a blob storage account. And I put this slide because we're going to be talking about these two different kind of file extension is a backpack and backpack a lot when we go to the demo. So I just thought, uh, you know, I'll talk about it up front. So when I mentioned that, uh, you don't wonder that what I'm talking about. So a backpack and backpack files are a kind of file. Uh, you can compare it to say like we create backups, right? In our SQL server on-prem and we create backup for different reason for disaster recovery or for refreshing our non-production environment. Uh, but in Azure, we cannot just, you know, take a database backup from our on-prem, move it up to Azure, to our blob storage account, and then restore. Azure support these two type of account, backpack and backpack. Backpack is going to hold only your schema and backpack will be schema plus data. Now, why they made this distinction? Because a lot of time companies, they are trying to migrate to Azure. I think their biggest challenge comes uh, with their schema because Azure is still not 100% compatible uh, syntax wise or even functionality wise in certain areas with on-prem. So the, what a lot of people do just to find out, say, okay, how much of my schema is compatible and how much is not? 
what are the objects that I cannot move to Azure as is? What are the objects that I need to send back to the developers to rewrite for Azure? So you can always create a datpack file and then just restore your schema or you can, as you will see in the in the demo, that you can create a solution in Visual Studio SSDT uh, or, or other tools just to see what are the objects that that's failing. Or you might have other reasons, right? You know, you might get from a third party uh, vendor just a schema, you know, for your next release to test out our stuff. Uh, so that's why I just put this out, and uh, and both of these files can interact with our Management Studio PowerShell. Um, SQL package.exe and we'll see those. Some people ask me all the time, you know, can we crack these files and see what it is? So you can really, you know, these are all XMLs, so, you know, you can rename it and and uh, and look it up, uh, you know, but you have to change your extension to zip and then, then you can try that. So Mike, any questions so far you can see on the panel? Because before I go to demo, I just want to make sure if you know people have any question, I answer those. We're good at this point. You can continue on. Great. Okay. So we're going to move to demo, and on the demo, I'm going to use these four tools. So Management Studio is everybody used to, and the reason I picked this one first, because Management Studio, uh, you know, we use this tool day in day out, at least for DBAs, and there is a feature we can just right click using the GUI just say move my database to Azure, to my account. Uh, that's the easiest. Is it the best solution? Probably not. And once you're done all four, you'll probably see why it's not the best one. And the next one, we're gonna use the SQL Azure Migration Wizard. This is also a GUI based, but it has a lot more feature than Management Studio, and we'll see that. But one caution is that this one is a community maintained uh, uh, tool right now. So you have to be careful because it might not have the latest schema that Azure supports. So you might get a false positive error that it might say, okay, I'm not supporting this, but it might be supported. Uh, so you, you might want to be a little bit careful with that one. And next one is SSDT. Uh, I know in Visual Studio 2017, SSDT comes with Visual Studio, so it's packed at one before you had to download and install it separately. Now you don't have to do it anymore going uh, from Visual Studio 2017 and up. The last one is SQL package.exe. And SQL package.exe is a command line tool. And it comes uh, with whenever we load we install SQL Server or Visual Studio. It comes with that. And I, lead, I like this one because a lot of people, you know, they still want to, you know, use command line, just have more control. And uh, you can also use PowerShell with SQL package.exe, you can wrap it around. So it's, you know, and it can produce both deckpack and backpack. So all of these has their own, um, you know, pros and cons, and I'll have a slide at the end for you to look at. So that being said, we'll move to the demo, and I'm going to switch my presentation a little bit here so you can see. Okay, so this is my portal. And for the demo today, I'm going to use this SQL Server and this storage account. But I will still create two more for everybody to see how I created this two. The reason I'm going to use this because I have the URL for my storage account and the keys, uh, everything is, you know, I put it in my script and I really don't want to type right now and, you know, get a problem. So, but I don't also want to, you feel like, okay, you know, we didn't see how I created those, how we're going to do this, and then, you know, you, you're not seeing it. So, and here, as you can see, this is my Yahoo account, and I'm using this with a MSDN license uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the portal. So you go to portal.azure.com, then you can sign up with your Microsoft account, 
And the first thing you have to do is you have to have a resource group and a resource group can contain a SQL server or multiple SQL servers. It can uh, hold pretty much all the resources that you see on the left can stay within a resource group. So we are right now here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say, go to SQL server. And we wanna create a new one. We give it a name. We have to give a account that will have, in our term, it's going to be a SA account. It will have privilege to the whole logical server, to every database. Confirm your password. And this is my subscription I'm going to use. I talked about resource group. So I already have a resource group created. I'm gonna use my existing one. And then we can choose the location, means which data center we want this SQL server. So you're just gonna, I'm just gonna choose East US, so it will be a little bit faster for me because I'm in East Coast. And then I'm going to say create. And we should see soon a notification that the deployment is started. So we're going to let this get created. Then I'll show you how to connect from Management Studio and also open the port, uh, the firewall. It will take some time. So let's go and create a storage account. And then we'll come back to this logical server. I have one question for you while we're in this mode too then. Sure. Is, you know, as far as migration, it's a question about migration. So what, what's roughly, what's the best strategy uh, approach to migrate, you know, a larger database, say terabytes or 30 terabytes in size? Yeah, I think once I show all four, I think that will answer that question. Uh, for me, you know, in, in my experience, I think you'll probably do your schema using a SSDT uh, in Visual Studio, and then you'll probably do your data separate, probably a BCP out and BCP in using blob storage. Okay. Yep. And, uh, and you know, once I show it, I, it will probably make it clear that why I gave this answer, probably not at this point, uh, but once I show all four, probably will make more sense. Does that answer question, Mike? Or yeah, yeah, I thought it was a timely, okay. timely thought just to try and sure, yeah. sure. So I'm going to create a storage account here. DBA VC. Uh, I'm just going to say general purpose is standard. And these are four different redundancy you can pick. Uh, we're just going to say locally redundant. And I would encourage you, you know, before you go to production to read about all four of those options and understand which one gives you what and what are the costs associated with each one of those. Again, I'm just going to use a existing resource group. I want in East US and create. So while this one is moving, we're gonna go back and see if the database got created or, or the, the server got created. Okay, so now we see that this one got created. 
And the first thing we need to do if we want to connect to it, set up the firewall. In Azure, one thing I like, by default, everything is closed and until you open anything. Or this is on-prem kind of, you have to close the loophole. So in Azure, it's a, we have to just open it for, so right now, as you can see, there's no IP, you know, there's no IP addresses allowed to connect to this. And if we go to properties, this is the namespace we get for the server that we just created. And if I go to my management studio, I say I want to connect to that. This is the login that I created. I give the password. It don't let us connect. We go to firewall. So add my client IP, save it. Now we go back and we are connected. Of course, there's no database because we just created a logical server. There's master and that's about it. And you will see the account that I created right here. So now we're gonna to move to migrating a database. So what I did for the interest of saving some time, I created this Fabrics database, but all the scripts I'm gonna send you, I just, this is pretty much, uh, you know, from an online uh, link that I also put uh, in my scripts. Uh, this is the link, it's, it's a code, you know, uh, in Codeplex, uh, there's a project that uh, you, you can just download and run these scripts and I'll, I'll send those to, to the organizer so you can download for you. So what I did here, created an empty database, create this store proc, and I like to use this store proc because you can create smaller or big test database with this. So we already created this right here, and now we're gonna use this to move to Azure. So for our demo purpose, I'm gonna use this one, which I created before, and I'm connected to this one, as you can see right now, there is no database here and I'm just gonna disconnect so we don't get confused with this one. So this is the one we're gonna to use to migrate. There's no user database. So first one using SSMS, we come here, we say task and I just tell it deploy database to Microsoft Azure SQL database. Of course, I need to give it a connection and I need to give the new database name. I'm just going to still use the same name, but tag it with SSMS so we know which one we created, what kind of tool. And this is the one I was talking about, like your database tiers, right? So I'm using a basic, it can be up to two gig. And with this model, a database for a whole month will only cost you $5. So if I create this database, leave it for 30 days, I'm only going to get charged for $5. And of course you can go you know, to the other ones with more money, but for test purpose, that's why I said it's pretty uh, you know, economical to do some tests. And as you can see here, I talked about backpack and backpack. This is gonna create a backpack means it's gonna move all our schema and data. So while this is going on, I'm gonna talk about, okay, so it's right there. So we'll, we'll let it go. Once it's done, we'll come back and see if there is any error and we'll also check if the database is there. And once I'm done with uh, using all the four tools, I'll also show you a set of scripts that I wrote in PowerShell. How do you compare that all your objects and data landed safely in Azure? Because that's very critical to, to do the audit once you did the migration that to make sure that you are not missing anything. So we'll look at that also at the end. The next we're gonna use, I call, uh, this is called Migration Wizard. And the reason I prefer this one over SSMS, though both are using GUI, 
if you look at this, you can really do a lot of stuff here. You can analyze and you can migrate both. So if you're near, if you're not ready to migrate, you are thinking to migrate, you can just analyze your database to see if it's computable. If you have a T-SQL file with a bunch of objects, instead of going against your database, uh, you can just test that file. Say if your developers are working and prepping you for moving to Azure, uh, you know, they want to test, you know, the different versions. If they're ready to go, they can always just open this tool, point to the T-SQL file and uh, and analyze it, see if it's uh, computable or not. Uh, and then it also gives you an option to migrate just a schema uh, and not doing the data. And even within a schema, you will have the opportunity to choose uh, what objects you want to migrate. So you don't have to do the whole thing like we did in SSMS. So in our case, we're going to choose a database. We go there. Uh, it's our local database. We say connect. And then the same database that we use with management history, the fabrics, we're going to move that one. And as here you can see, I can choose that. Do I want all tables? or you know, I want certain ones. So you have that flexibility over here that you didn't have before. And if you go to advanced, you can uh, you can choose a bunch of stuff that you want to move or you don't want to move. So this one works a little bit different. First, it's going to just generate a script. It's not going to do anything in cloud. Then we'll connect to the cloud and then we'll create a shell of a database, and then it's going to deploy these scripts against that shell. So let's go to Management Studio. It's still running. I think we are towards the end. It's importing right now and updating the database in cloud. So, okay. So this this file is created, and you can see where it saved all the files. You can go and look at that, and there's also a log file for you to look at. Next, we move here. Now we give our Azure server name here to tell it that what's our destination. This is my login, add server name, and I'm going to put my password. And then I'm going to say connect. And I want to create a new database. I don't want to override the one I created with SSMS. And you're going to call this migration wizard. Again, I'm going to choose a basic you know, because our database is pretty small. Default collision, you can change if you need to. Create the database. So let's look at, okay, so this one is done through the Management Studio. We'll go back to the portal at the end and look at all those. But if we just quickly go to the Management Studio and do a refresh here, we should see that database. Yep, Fabrics SSMS, Fabrics MW, still doesn't have any data, it's just had the shell. Now we're going to say execute the script against this destination. And we'll let it run. We'll come back to look at it when it's all done. Mike, any question as of now, or are we good? We're still good. Okay, great. So next we're going to look at Visual Studio using SSDT. So here we're going to create a solution. We're going to set up the target for that solution that it's a Azure version 12 SQL database. Then we're going to do a build. If the build is successful, then we're going to deploy it to cloud. So, uh, you know, most DBAs probably don't use Visual Studio day to day, but developers probably use, but developers mostly use. Uh, but, you know, you can open the SQL Server Object Explorer from there. It's pretty much same as our Management Studio view. Uh, so we can go here, Fabrics database we are we are doing, and we're going to say we want to do a create new project, and we're going to give it a name. 
Fabrics SSDT. I have the folder pre-created, so directory for solution. I don't want to put it in source control. This is just for demo purpose. But if you are really developing, you should put that in source control. Then from there, uh, developers can start working on the objects that are not uh, comparable. Okay, so this is done. This is the wizard that we use, migration wizard. So this one is done. We say exit and we already did look at that. The database is here, but now it will also have all the objects within that because those scripts were deployed against this, this database. Okay, so now the Visual Studio is creating a project and once it creates a project, then I'm going to show you how to change this property, the target, and then do the build and deploy. But, you know, for the interest of time, I'm going to leave this here. We'll come back and finish this up and uh, let's look at the SQL package.exe. A, a quick question while we're transferring. Um, what sure. version is a diff is uh, the default for Azure on the portal. Does it vary or is it always one or? Version 12 right now. Okay. So Everything goes to portion. version 12. Is that 2014? You cannot really compare that way. It's 14 because uh, Microsoft's model right now, anything we see on-prem actually came through Azure. So I would say it's a 16 plus. <laughs> That's how I would put it. So I, any yeah. feature we see on-prem, will come through Azure. So it first goes goes to Azure, they use it there, then it comes on-prem now. It's not other way. I got it, yeah. So, yep, yep. Okay, so we are already, you know, it, it's done. So let's look at this. So we have a solution here that we just created. I'm gonna go to properties. And this is, I was talking about target platform. So once I say that my target is version 12, and I do the build is going to check against the schema for version 12. And we come here, we do a build. You know, this one I tested, it won't fail, fail just, but if you want to play with this, I will, in my script, I will add this number five script. If you just create this user with this backslash, your build actually is going to fail because Azure doesn't support a user with a backslash just for, you know, if somebody want to test it. And now we're going to publish this and we give the target to our Azure SQL server. Just to show you the connection property. This is the one we are using. My username, password. Okay. And we want to give the name Fabrics. We are using SSDT and publish. And this one is only going to do a schema. If we have time, we'll look at this. This is not going to move your data. So that's important to remember. This is just a schema. And I'll show you a way to move the data here using the data compare tool built into Visual Studio. But for large database, I definitely do not recommend you to using uh, data compare tool. It's going to, just going to take ages. You're probably going to do, you know, uh, BCP in, BCP out, BCP in, or come up with some other kind of, um, you know, export import uh, process. So while this is running, we'll come back and, and, and look at that. So let's go to SQL pack, uh, package.exe. So this is, you know, this comes with your SQL Server installation and it is in this folder. And so let's move in there. And what we are doing here, SQL package.exe, and you can definitely look at the documentation and, you know, what are the options. But what I'm doing here, I'm saying export from my local host 
Fabrics database, and my target is a backpack file means a schema plus data, put it in my C drive. That's all I'm doing here. Okay, so this is done. And right now, as I said, there is no data to show you that if I go to tools, SQL Server, if I do a data comparison, I'm back to the SQL Server, uh, to the Visual Studio. I'm just rushing a little bit because of time. And we're gonna pick the local Fabrics database. And the Azure one and we're gonna compare the data and it will show that I don't have any data in the Azure one. Let's go back there. Okay, still it's working, it's magic here, extracting a schema. And if we go to the C drive right now, this is the file as you can, no, it didn't create yet, sorry. Still working on it. Mike, any question as of now? While we are waiting for this to. Um, so when you do the migration, does it bring over all yep. the users and their permissions and so forth? Um, at that point, is it a clean? Is it complete, or do you have to kind of do an extra process? So for users, yes, uh, it's not going to take your logins. And in Azure, you really have a little bit of, uh, you know, you, you have to do your setup and it all depends, right? Uh, if, if you're doing AD auth authentication, then you, you, your sysadmins and your infrastructure team has to really do some work beforehand to set up your AD synchronization between uh, your, uh, your Azure and your on-prem. And, and that can really lead us to a different discussion how to set up those security and stuff. But for us here, uh, it's just on my on-prem, I have a user for that uh, for that login and that's going to take it and I still have to create those logins in the master database to answer that question. Okay. So it's going to do a compare here that we are doing. And as you can see here, only in source, we have all these rows, but in target, we don't have anything. So it means SSDT, the way we did it, it only moved my schema, not the data. But because this is so tiny, you can see it's the Maxis 32,000 record. I'm just going to say update record, update the target, and it's going to sync both, and we'll come back and look at it. So here right now, we got a backpack file here. And now if we go here, we should... Uh, Yep, this is the file it got created right now, 2.53 p.m. Now what we can do, the two things we can do. We can use another tool called AJ Copy, and I put here how you can get that. This is also a Windows command line utility. You can use this to move this file to the account that we created in cloud. So to my storage account, I can move this as a blob and then we can import it from there to keep build a database. Or, so I can move that to this storage account and you know, let's do that and then we can come back and see it if we have time. So it's saying AJ copy, my source is C drive. This is my storage URL and this is my key. And you always get two keys. If you go to the portal, you will see, so you can rotate between the two. And this is the file that I want to move to. And this is my account SWWAJ1 right here. So while that is happening, we'll come down here and see what we can do with SQL package.exe. I can say, import this backpack file to my SQL server. 
give it a name, Fabrics Backpack One. This is my username and what I did, so I don't have to type in the password in front of everybody. I just put it in a text file and I'm just taking it in a variable and using that variable right here. I think before I do all this, what I have to do is I have to log in from here to my Okay, so it's going to do it right now. So it's going to move this to to cloud. And if we go to the Visual Studio, do a refresh. And now we can see that the data is in sync, identical record on both sides. So as we are towards the end of the time, and I'm going to you know, send all this script so you can get it. What I did here, pretty much I'm getting my server instance and creating some text files in my local drive. And then here I take all the database name that I have in the SQL server. Then I just write it for each loop. I check if all the object types and do a count here. Then I'm gonna compare this with my on-prem uh, on prem database. So if we come here, We can literally see that, you know, how many foreign key I have, how many primary key, how many user table, and what kind of data I have, how many rows here. Yeah, I'm kind of stuck here right now. So we're just going to cancel this. It's it's still updating the database, so I can show you the verification because we are towards the end of the time, but we still have three databases, so we can work on those. I'm just deleting if those files exist. So Toyab, I see that we can migrate database schemas and the data. Yep. How do we do things uh, like say jobs, SSIS packages and so forth, other, other, other activities? Yep. So that will take us to a different discussion, I'll be honest with you, because jobs, what a lot of people did different things. Uh, I've talked to people that they created a VM in Azure and then installed a SQL Server, their SQL Server with the agent. I see. And they, and they will control all their jobs from there. Okay. Many jobs, you can just schedule it with PowerShell. Uh, uh, and there is something that's uh, not for public right now, it's in preview. Uh, they are actually working a separate tool just to manage SQL Server agent jobs. I think that should be out pretty soon. So I don't want to talk about it right now because it's not public. Yep. No, that's okay. That's yeah. a valid. Um, just yep. so. so I'm just going to take this database name and then run this here. But that's a very good question. I mean, a lot of people, you know, those are the things that holding people from from moving because they're not sure what to do. And and Microsoft actually moving very quickly to make every feature available, whatever is available on-prem, to make it available to cloud. And Microsoft believe by end of the this year, they will be somewhere there. So, mm -hmm. so now if we look at here, the script I ran, it shows that, and I hope I can put this side by side so you guys can see. So now you see I have four foreign key, five primary key, one store proc, and five user table. That's what I have. And I did it for each database that three we, we were able to finish within the time that we had. And for data, we can do the same, just do a count. I'm not checking every bit of every row. I'm just doing a count and see if count matches. And I'm sure most shops, when you do upgrade or migration, you probably will be happy if your count matches. 
So again, if we look at this count, and this count, we can see that 2,500, 330, 5,000, 32,000, 130, and 1,534. So that gives us a comfort level that yes, we are successful in migrating. We didn't lose anything. So I'm gonna go back to slides and So this is a comparison. I'm not going to read all this, uh, but I put this here just to summarize uh, all the pros and cons between the four things that we saw. And you know, I do talk about it in some sessions. So you know, if this is a bigger, longer session, so I had it like go one by one. Oh, sorry. And these are the resources. So I'm gonna send this link where you can sign up for some free credit and some other resources that, you know, uh, that I used some of the tools where you can get those. And this is my contact. And I know we are past three minutes. So Mike, it's up to you. If we take some questions, if there is, uh, I'm I'm available to take questions or okay. I can you know, reach out to people later on or put it in a blog post and then we can publish that too. Okay, we will continue with a couple of questions, but I know the time. Some folks are really limited in time, and they have to, they have to sure. sign off. So I wanted to say all the presentation that Toyab did today, that'll be captured. The recording is captured, and all of his examples, um, he'll send to us. We will post them on the the dba.sqlpass.org site, um, and you can actually download them there and get all the examples and so forth right there. Um, that'll be that should be up online by this weekend. So just for folks, if you want those, they'll be there. Um, with that, we do have a couple of questions. We'll dive into a little bit here. Um, and Mike, uh, sorry, one thing is people can also reach out to me via you know any of these ways if they want to mm -hmm. question. They don't don't want to ask now, but they find it later on when they're practicing. And if I don't know the answer, I'll find it and and try to you know send an answer. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great service and feature. That's one of the features we get from um, being part of the bigger SQL Server family that we do help each other quite a bit, and I do appreciate that. Um, and all the questions that uh, we got to today and some that we won't have a chance to get to, those will be forwarded on Toyob as well, so you can actually follow him uh, and, and get his responses as he starts to blog about those uh, when he gets time. Um, but I want to circle back to a question we asked earlier about, you know, what what are some strategies? Now that we've seen... Uh, the different strategies that you've gone through. Um, what would be the best one for a 30 terabyte database is the question we asked earlier. Sure, so I'll go back to that. Mm -hmm. What I'm finding out, most people's challenge is not the data. People are being challenged with their schema. Really? Because, yes, because there's certain functionality people, like just to give you an example that I am working on right now is a CLR code. So CLR as of now is not compatible in Azure. They don't support it. And I have thousands of so what I do with those. And I'm not saying that data is not a challenge, right? It's the time, like how you move it. Uh, and what a lot of folks have started, and when I talk to people, what they're doing is they're saying, okay, if I have a 30 terabyte, there is most of his probably historical data, right? So let's export those and start moving out to the blob storage, open storage account. So when I do the cut over, you know, and it depends how you do it. If you, you know, if, if you have a date range or certain IDs, and I just have to do the Delta on the cut over time. So I'm not gonna take my business down to move 30 terabyte of data to cloud, right? And right now, if you're really moving to a 30 database, you're probably going to some some kind of horizontal, um, sorry, yeah, some kind of horizontal partitioning scheme you probably have to come up with because they're not going to support a, a single 30 terabyte database. So once you go there and you know you come up with your strategy, what are you going to do? You'll probably move 28 terabyte beforehand and just keep, or maybe more, and just keep one terabyte for the final cutover time. I see. Yeah, but a lot of people are, most challenges are coming, you know, is, is the schema is, you know, I have linked server, what I do with those. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, I have code in my functions, in my stored procedures that's not supported. Cross joints are not supported. So people are doing external tables. 
uh, if you have you know data in two table two database that you cannot merge right now so there's a feature called external tables people are using that to do joins so those are the i think more uh, challenges that that people are trying to solve uh, than the volume itself i would say but you know it can be a problem i haven't moved a 30 terabyte i'll be honest with you so i really don't know all the challenges that will come with that yeah, that 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 that's a big one to kind of move. it's just the volume of data. I'm I'm doing a, a 15 terabyte one now, and yep. you know, and it's and we, I ran from a meeting to come to host this from that meeting. I left early because um, yeah, we're trying to we're trying to come up with that strategy. So it's not easy. Uh, no, it's not. And, it's, and 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 I'm sure you you will probably very soon, and if not already, you'll probably start looking at horizontal partitioning of your data, and 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 you know. Uh, looking at probably like you know uh, data lake data factory and some of other stuff you will probably be you know going to to that route and and for that you know i don't know if you know what is edx it's online um, uh, kind of a university that microsoft partnered with i can send you some information they have some cool uh, courses you can do at your own pace about uh, big data moving to my uh, to azure yeah but i think to kind of give a i'm going to try and summarize a little bit that it's there's 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 this solution, Azure is a solution for the database, but there's other components that have to be taken into account. And exactly, and and it's it's, it's a fast maturing product, as as you were saying. A lot of the features that are on prem are going. The goal is to have them all in the cloud by the end of the year, and so that just enhances the product and and, and the whole process. There are challenges of any migration, um, but some pieces will make it and some won't, and you have to look at it on a, a case by case basis and. And size does matter when you're migrating data. So that, that is an extra concern that we have to take. Yeah, um, you know, there's a gentleman named John Serra. If you go to his blog, he works for Microsoft. Uh, he, actually, I met him uh, like a month ago in our Boston SQL Saturday. And so what he told me or told us, the way Microsoft, they have everything on the plate. All the features they want to get there, but they have to prioritize right with their resources, right? right how fast right. they want to move. But they said that the release that you're going to get by or where Azure will be at the end of Christmas this year or during Christmas, uh, you will be surprised when you look back eight months ago and looking at the version yeah. of today. That's all he said. So they they are aware of it. That's what's holding people. So and they are right. working aggressively on those. Right, and and as you said, features that. Features are hitting the cloud before they actually hit on-prem because they can get a lot more heuristics on it that way because they own yeah. all the infrastructure so they can figure yes. out what's being used. So it, 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 it's a nice process. I think it's going to improve the quality of the product overall. Well, with that, I am going to kind of wrap up today's session. Uh, we, we, we can keep going all the time on these on these great topics with great speakers and great, and great content. But unfortunately, we do have to kind of time box this. So with that, I do want to say a very hearty thank you to Toyab um, for taking time out and presenting to us and all the folks who came online to listen and those that actually asked uh, additional questions. And, and, uh, and with that, we want to kind of sign off for today, say thank you very much, and we'll see you uh, next, at the next session in, in three weeks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.